right there. I thought I would put my swing up here for you to see so that you can see that. Well, the coach here actually can swing for one and two, so I can describe what it is that I do with this golf club. And that's supposed to be full speed, but I'm not sure that's full speed in the playback window here. But those are full speed golf swings. Okay, so here we go. At address, when the club is sold flat to the ground, we can draw a line right up the club shaft. And that is our plane angle. Okay? The significance of this is, if I get that club shaft back down on that angle, at impact, I'm going to hit the ball solid every single time. So, the golf club has three parts. It has the club shaft, the club head, and the club face. The club shaft works in two ways. It's got to lean forward and impact. The hands have to be head of the golf, of the club head at impact, or you can't hit down and compress the ball. But second is that lie angle of the golf club, the way the club is designed. The club is square only when the face is going toward the target, the path is going toward the target, and the shaft is at its original angle. If the club comes down on a more vertical angle than that, the ball is going to the right. That's why a ball below your feet slices. Uh, conversely, if it comes down flatter than that angle, the ball is going left. That's why a ball above your feet wants to go left. That's loft at an angle for you. Anyway, my whole swing, I guess it's, it's not really a theory, folks. It's just it's the use of the club to create predictable ball flight. That's all I preach. Well, it's based on returning that club and controlling the shaft, the face, and the path. That's all. So here's what happens. The first thing I do is an idiosyncrasy. I drop my hands down. I think it's just a comfort thing. I'm not sure. My hands drop right there as I take the club back. I don't care. Drops a little bit below plane, and I don't care about that either. Because at the top of the backswing, despite the fact that I'm trying to stay on plane, at the top of the backswing, there is an automatic shift above that original plane to a secondary plane. Despite the fact that that is a very good backswing. Okay, and I'll tell you what I think about that. My left arm is perpendicular to my spine. My right forearm is straight down. My left wrist is flat. Pretty good stuff. Despite that, I'm a foot above plane. And if you think that's on plane, I suppose that you might not realize you have to get back down to the original plane. If you think that you're on plane up here at the top, you might just swing down the secondary plane, and that shaft angle will be much more vertical, and the ball's going to go right on you. In fact, it's I think it's one, for every one degree more upright that club is at impact than it's designed to be, the ball's going to go 11 feet right at the target on an otherwise square path, square face hit. So imagine that I'm coming down, what's that going to be? 10 degrees? That's 50... Uh, 10 degrees, 10 times 11. That's got to be a lot of feet. 100 feet. 100 feet to the right. Even though the club face is square. And the club pan is square. That's why this original plane angle is so important to me. <clears throat> so it's not just the club face and the club path. It's also the club shaft. So here's the deal. You want to get those hands. I don't care if you drop them, pull them, swing them. Uh, I don't care if you move your right arm. I don't care what you do. In fact, you're better, probably better off not thinking how to do it. Just take your hands, put them off of this top line, and get them on the original line as fast as you can. The earlier the better. The more you can ride that plane, the more your line of compression is going to be straight as well as set of contact. So there, the hands are already dropping off that secondary plane. You'll notice up here that my club shaft has flattened to an even flatter angle than its original angle. That's okay. That's preferred errors to get inside that plane. 
The reason in my case that that happens, I always had a steep shaft angle, and I learned how to what's called swivel, actually rotate my left arm this way at the start down to get that club to always flatten out and air toward below plane rather than above it. Okay? And as you see, it turns out pretty good by about here. The hands have returned to the plane. The club shaft is crossing the plane a little bit to the inside, not too shabby. Boy, that's a good picture right there. That's the slot, folks. The club shaft is right on the right forearm. The hands are on plane. Oh, boy. That's it. On plane. Parallel to the target line, parallel to the ground. The entire right forearm is on plane. Right on plane still. I'm going to get rid of the secondary plane now. Oh, boy. That's going to be a good shot, folks unless the club face is not square. Now there's contact. The entire length of the shaft is flat on that plane. Now I want you to notice something else. The ball's gone, right? About a foot or foot and a half gone. There comes the divot. That means the low point of my golf swing. One was on plane. Two low point occurred after impact. That is the only way you can create backspin and compression so you can hit the golf ball far and because of the other impact factors straight-ish. Straight's awful hard to do but I'll tell you what my driver draws a little bit long irons draw a little bit if I want them to. They'll fade a little bit if I want them to uh, once I get down to about the six iron, the ball goes just about dead straight because of those impact conditions right there. The nice thing about this whole swing plane model is that once you get down to where you can repeat that path of club, that plane of shaft, then the only variable you have is the club face angle, and that is very manageable. Still takes educating the hands, but it is very very manageable. Now, you know, I'm not one of those active body people, but in my case, I've never really had a, a tr trouble turning out of the shot. So I don't even worry about it. I just let my arms yank my body around. Okay, I prefer to concentrate on either my hands or the mainly really the club head itself and let my body do what it's got to do to deliver the club the way I want. So I don't really, how-to instruction scares me. I don't want to tell people how to do this. What I want them to do is get on video, see what you are doing, do something different within my guidelines. But again, they're not really my guidelines, they're the club's guidelines. So there you go. That is my swing. I'll show you that at full speed a couple more times. Sorry about the wind. Can't control that. 